So here's what I'm doing today. I picked up the parts to make a, a new drain for my uh, Tormach. Had an event recently where the coolant that was coming down to the uh, drain was actually coming faster uh, than it could empty out of this uh, tray underneath. Now I have a modified uh, cooling system anyway. The system is capable, of the pump that's in here is rated at 1800 gallons per hour, but my measured flow at the nozzle is just a little over 300 gallons per hour. So that flow, originally when I built this system, the flow was uh, about 295. Uh, that was four or five months ago. Since then, uh, I'm not sure exactly what's changed, but the flow has increased a little bit. I'm getting about 310 gallons per hour. Turns out 290 uh, gallons per hour or whatever it was, uh, was just barely what the uh, the tray underneath the, uh, the chip uh, collector there could handle. And when I got up to 310 or 320, whatever it was, the 10% increase, it was just enough to uh, cause it to overflow. And of course it happened when I wasn't in the, uh, in the shop at the time. I was moving around elsewhere and I came in and I had six gallons of coolant on the floor or so. Uh, fortunately I use a uh, non-oil based coolant, a synthetic coolant. So that's no, not a problem. Well, when I built this setup originally, I had it designed to make room for two as necessary. Figured I'd add a second one if I needed to. Well, looks like I need to. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm building exactly what I've got. I'm just building a second one. I'll drill another hole uh, back somewhere in this area and then drain it out right next to this current one right here. So I've got enough room to grow in this area that it's not going to be a problem. So I just need to uh, increase my capacity for the coolant return. Now with this setup, this is a quarter inch uh, lock line with quarter inch nozzles. Uh, it, it should be more than adequate. However, I, uh, if I decide that I need it, this, this is plenty of coolant flow as of right now. I haven't had any reason for any more. But I did some testing where I have an option to go to uh, even more flow by using the half inch lock line and quarter inch nozzles on there. I can get about 500 gallons per hour out of this, uh, out of the system. So I knew that I wasn't going to be able to uh, support that flow rate with my return system and I wasn't uh, able to do that even with this system. So this system worked fine for uh, five months I guess, no issues whatsoever and then all of a sudden it was overflowing. I, I actually, actually thought I had a problem with a clog in the system. So I dismantled the whole thing looking for a problem. I couldn't find one. So then I realized it was just overflowing because it was uh, slightly more flow than it had been previously when I measured it. Like I said, it was 10% more than uh, it was when I initially built the system. So that was probably the uh, uh, the primary issue. So what I'm going to do is basically build a replica and show the steps uh, for building the uh, building the drain. So let's go over the parts involved here. Uh, this strainer, it's a two inch, it's a, referred to as a bar sink strainer. Uh, it does say professional grade on here. Uh, basically, that means in case you felt like your Tormach was hobby grade only, now you can uh, if you put one of these on your machine. You can say you got professional grade equipment. So, the strainer uh, is a two inch strainer. I have a connector here. One in it. This is all one and a half inch uh, pipe. This is a, they call it an extension coupling. Uh, this is the I think they call this a J bend. Uh, it says wall tube, wall bend, inlet one and a half. So basically, this is uh, this is not set up for the configuration. I'm running it in. This is I'm just using it as my downspout at the end. This is the part that actually mates up to the uh, to the strainer in the bottom of the tray. The gasket that goes on here is included in the um, strainer kit. So it's as simple as drilling a hole in the tray, dropping this thing in, tightening the nut attaching this to the bottom of the uh, strainer, putting your connector in with everything trimmed to length of course and then putting this on the end having that dump down into the uh, dump down into the uh, coolant reservoir and that's it. That's all there is to this uh, design. 
All right, continuing with the task of installing a new and or second drain to the uh, Tormach. Got a couple pieces of hardware here to show you. Uh, I think most importantly, if you have the idea that you want to have an additional strainer in here, it, it does come with a strainer basket. This is the one that it comes with. It's designed that you can rotate it and it'll drop down in the, uh, in the gaps so that you can actually stop the... Um, uh, the sink from drain. This is, of course, useful if you're using this for sink. Uh, what I did with mine uh, when I installed the first one is actually remove the rubber stopper uh, portion of it and that spindle uh, or pin, whatever you want to call it, in the middle, and then stuck a bolt in so I could grab it. And I thought, hey, that'd be a great idea for a second strainer. Um, really, a third one in my entire system. I figured that would work pretty well to uh, uh, keep the chips from going down the uh, tube. Uh, or the drain spout into the reservoir. Turns out it was a terrible idea and my chip tray overflowed for the very first time. So I've since discarded that idea. I recommend uh, that you should do the same as well as there's no value to that uh, considering the other screen, the other screens that are in place. At least if you're if you have a system that's similar to mine where it has the uh, chip screen right in the table and it has a strainer above the reservoir. So on to actual hardware work. So I'm using a Sterilite 73 quart uh, tub for the reservoir. The height of it, relative to the height of the chip tray here, is such that I have just enough room to get the um, uh, downspout from the tray over the side. So it's not much room. In fact, in some ways it's sort of sitting on it. So there isn't much room in there, which is one of the reasons why I went with a smaller strainer in the first place, because I didn't have much room to work with. So that should be mentioned. It would be nice to be able to modify that uh, uh, the, the drain in the tray so that I had a little bit more room to work with, but it's what I got. No big deal. It fits in there. So no problem there. Alright, so now we're under the chip tray on the side of the mill. Starting to get an idea of where we need to fit the components so that we don't run into issues here. Basically the same fitment as before. I just want to be sure that this collar and the uh, nuts don't interfere with the side of the reservoir in my case. So I have enough clearance there because there is uh, certainly some uh, some fit problems if I were to put that in the wrong spot. So I just want to be sure that I don't run into that. Um, this uh, the J tube or whatever you want to call it, what they call it here wall tube, wall bend, inlet one and one half inches. We want to be sure that that part doesn't interfere with the uh, uh, we want to be sure that this, the coupler doesn't interfere with it and the tube is at its maximum length while we connect it. So next step basically is to drill a hole pick out where we want to put it. So it looks like it's going to be probably under the chip tray more or less. I want to have access to it from above so that I can get uh, down to it by pulling the uh, chip screen out in the event of a clog, I don't want to have to come underneath and pull the chip tray out and be able to get to it pretty quickly if there's a, a coolant buildup of some kind. So that's worth mentioning. So let me move on to the next step. So here's the uh, coolant tray viewed from above through the table where the chip screen normally is. You see what I'm talking about with access to the top of the existing uh, existing strainer. Now I put that one where the uh, where the stock drain hole is where that one inch welded uh, pipe is in the uh, in the tray. Seemed like a reasonable place to put it. I'm going to put this one nearby, probably back here somewhere. So that's my uh, that's my goal. I'll mark it out and then uh, start drilling. So I dropped a short second section of PVC pipe into the uh, coolant tray from above just to get an idea of where I wanted to drill. That's a spot that above, from above, it's like right about there. That's where I figure I want the second hole to be, opposite corner basically, of the uh, where the chip tray is. Before I drilled the hole I figured I want to get some idea of whether or not this is going to fit the way it's configured. Looks like it's going to fit without a problem because I don't need the tube back as far as that is going to be. Uh, I just wanted to be sure that the components didn't collide like the two couplers and uh, maybe the angles would be too close together or something like that. But this looks good enough. i got a pretty good range in here to to work with and it'll still fit in the uh, outlet just fine. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. Here's the existing modified chip tray prior to putting the second drain in it. 
the uh, just a quick view from the top here. I'm gonna put the second one right about there. So I shouldn't have any problem completing these uh, mods right here on the floor without even disassembling the uh, existing drain pipe. Uh, plan is to drill a one inch, one eighth inch pilot hole right there, flip it over, and then drill the rest of the uh, hole from the back side. Nothing to it really. I don't even have to take the downspot off, I don't think, at this point. So here we go. So the hole saw that I'm using to make the uh, hole in the tray is a two inch, two inch hole saw. I think I'd show that. It is slightly larger than the, uh, the size of the drain. Maybe a one and seven eighths or something like that. The hole saw would be a little bit better fit, but with the gasket area being so large, it's not going to be a problem getting the uh, seal. So that's the experience I've had so far with the other one. I figured it wouldn't be an issue. So the pilot hole is in place. Uh, no turning back at this point. Could uh, I could shift the hole around, of course, a little bit. But once the pilot hole's in, pretty much set uh, where you're going to put the uh, the hole. Period. So no turning back at this point. I'm satisfied with my hole location here. So I figured I might as well go ahead and drill this hole. All right, the hole is in the uh, plate now. My hole saw is running out of life, I think. Drilled a few holes in steel with this thing and it doesn't like it too much. Anyway, now it's time to clean up the hole and uh, uh, clean up the whole tray, debar the edge and assemble the uh, uh, strainer. So the hole has been deburred now and uh, everything's cleaned up. The, uh, I used some uh, brake parts cleaner on the surface be sure that the surface was nice and clean for the uh, gasket to seal to. So it's just a matter of assembly now. The new strainer is in place and this helps document one of the problems that is inherent with this design is that the gasket goes between the strainer and the tray on the top side which means that there, there is a standoff distance between the two about uh, an eighth of an inch or so. Maybe a little bit less than that. Alright I have the downspout all right, I have the downspout attached to the uh, strainer in the bottom of the coolant tray. You can see that it's definitely passed. This is all uh, uncut PVC, so it's going to be a little bit longer than necessary, which of course is good. I do have to move this coupler back, which means this pipe has to be uh, cut. It looks like I want about two inches out of it in order to get it in the middle, so it should be easy enough. I'll just uh, take it off of here and give it a quick cut, and that should be it. All right, with two inches off, the mock-up says this is looking good, so I'll go ahead and install it. All right, the second drain is now installed and tightened. Everything's ready to go. Found it a lot easier to take the coolant tray out of the mill and try to tighten it down. I spent probably five minutes trying to get the thread started. Uh, nothing but a minor annoyance, of course, uh, but everything's ready to go. I'm ready to test it now and see how it works. Before I start the coolant flow, I figured I'd show the uh, strainer in position get an idea of where it's fitting relative to the opening here that's pretty much it so now it's time to switch on the coolant and test alright the coolant system has been running uh, run the small nozzles right now this is uh, quarter inch hose, quarter inch nozzles so the total flow is right about 300 gallons per hour no problem so far, in fact I checked underneath this a moment ago it's a good way to clean your foam up by the way crap load of coolant flow. Uh, I checked underneath and there was absolutely no sign of any uh, coolant buildup. These, uh, these the light out here. Yeah. The, uh, these aren't even straining compared to what I'm used to seeing. The reservoir barely has any fluid in it at all or a coolant. So what I'm going to do next is step up to the uh, half inch hoses and the quarter inch nozzles which flow right about 500 gallons per hour and see what happens then. I suppose OSHA would probably have a problem with something like this normally. I'm thinking this isn't just a hobby. Yep, that's <laughs> my boy. Alright, got the big nozzles going here. This half inch lock line hose with quarter inch straight nozzles. Uh, 
blows about 500 gallons. Uh, blows about 500 gallons per hour. And I can't. When I aim the cooling directly down in the tray, it didn't handle that too well. I think he's trying to get my attention. When I uh, direct it. When I directed the coolant flow down into the uh, ship tray, it certainly didn't handle it then. But right now, let's see. Let me turn on the light here. Handling it without a problem right now. This still looks like less flow than was coming out of one nozzle when I had the uh, a one downspout. Just no kidding away from this. The uh, the coolant, uh, the coolant downspout, coolant flow out of the downspout was uh, more than this when it was a single nozzle for. Yes, that is as deafening as it sounds. Uh, pretty good flow. In fact, let me uh, let me set this up and I'll show you what it looks like. Show what it looks like when I. And the cooling nozzle right down into the into the tray when it starts getting overwhelmed. All right, here we go. Just never mind the screaming. No, it's actually being injured right now, even though it sounds like it. All right, there we go. So pretty quickly, starts to fill up. Still then, it's not even bad. The level's definitely higher. Seems to be handling this even just fine. So this is about as bad as it's going to be ever. With a coolant spraying right down into it. Man, with a coolant. It's like it wants my attention or something. With a coolant spray going right down into the uh, spray. But I mean, it's handling no problem. That's plenty of coolant right there. About 500 gallons an hour or so. Oh, no. All right, let me go take care of uh, this chatty child over here. That's it. Testing is complete at installation.